Hello my fellow chatterers and anyone else who's popped in here because you're curious about what this video is or you've got a bit lost. Welcome! I'm going to talk, uh, well, or chatter away madly about why I am asking my friends and my family not to buy me or my children any Harry Potter merch or any of the Harry Potter book related things. Um, it is a clickbaity title, um, but I am absolutely going to be talking about that. Um, and I want to be signposting you to other videos that I found that go much more into depth on this subject. So I can point you in the directions of those. Um, and as well as sort of like giving my own thoughts to this too. Um, I have a lot of notes because there's a lot of things that I want to say and I want to be as concise as possible and I don't have the um, ability to edit because I have a very ancient laptop so you will have to bear with the page shuffling. Um, so if you are unaware um, about JK Rowling's transphobia um, and her opinions in an essay that she put up in 2020 um, which it the you know, at, it, at its best was misinformation spreading and um, at its worst provides a platform for harmful and hurtful thoughts um, to the trans community. Um, I am going to point you in the direction in both the descri description box and also um, in some little video links um, to two other spaces. Um, so one is the Mermaids charity um, and they did a essay sort of in response to, no, they did a letter in response to um, J.K. Rowling's anti-trans essay um, and it was really respectful and it was really explaining why this was misinformation and why this is hurtful to the trans community. Um, so if you're not aware of these things then please go and do look at that. Um, it's a really wonderful response and gives you a great amount of information um, on the subject. I'm also going to point you in the direction of Jamie and Shabba who are two YouTubers um, they did a video responding to all of this um, and it was called Responding to J.K. Rowling's essay, Is It Anti-Trans? Uh, spoiler, yes! Um, they broke it down. Um, Jamie is a trans man who is also a doctorate in the field of transgender well-being and development and Saba, his cisgender now wife, um, at the time fiancé, um, is a doctoral researcher in the field of psychology and communication. So they produced this video, it's very long, but it breaks down all the points of the essay and kind of goes through the evidence. Both the article by Mermaids and the video by Jamie and Shabba are really respectful and they come from a place of education and from wanting to uh, basically <laughs> promote understanding. Um, so please, please go and have a look at those because I do think they are fantastic things. Um, why am I not wanting um, any more Harry Potter stuff for me and my children when I love the middle grade fantasy world? And this was one of the series that I think many people who are my age um, grew up with and it just promoted a lifelong joy of middle grade fantasy. Also, these stories have then gone on to um, inspire both readers and also like budding authors and illustrators to create more magical worlds and places um, and, and just the joy of this genre. The reason is that I do not want <laughs> to fund a space for hate and transphobia. So I do not want J.K. Rowling to have any of my money. I we, I still have the books, I have the original books. I'm always going to have them because they formed a part of my childhood, but I don't feel comfortable displaying them on my channel um, just because of, unfortunately, the author is so well known in what she represents and her um, transphobic views. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, even though I know the stories were not about that and created a space of joy for so many people. That is my That is my decision of why I'm not doing that. Um, I have mentioned them in the past when I've spoken about my videos and I've always put, you might see a few, few familiar faces <laughs> and some like trans promoting books to kind of balance it out. But I am now making the decision that I do not, I don't want to display them um, anymore. Um, and I especially um, 
although I am reading, well I've read the first one with my Mad March hair and I do intend to read the series with him, I don't want to get any of the wonderful things that you can get in the Harry Potter world and I have been in the shops and I have been in there going oh I love that, I love that, but I don't, even though I love those ideas and the magic and all of that, I no longer want that merchandise bought for me um, and I'm definitely not going to buy it myself. So <laughs> there is an argument about separating art from the artist and this is explained really beautifully why in this particular case it doesn't work. Um, so there, um, so the YouTuber um, Vera from the channel Council of Geeks has a video where they explain this so well. Um, the video, which I will link, is called J.K. Rowling is getting worse, in brackets, Graham Norton, royalties and the presumption of innocence. So when there are, there are many, um, especially classic authors that have racist views, <laughs> um, but they are now dead. So you, by buying those books, you are not supporting them and their ability to be vocal on uh, the subject. So you're not going to be spreading racist thoughts by buying their work. Uh, JK Rowling is actively <laughs> supporting and being vocal about and providing a space for um, transphobes and anti-trans thoughts and anti-trans ideas. Um, this is all done under the label of concerns, um, which if you see the previous things I've mentioned, that is the Mermaid Letter and Jamie and Shabba's video, these are unfounded concerns. She is, so she is individually influencing and funding things. So by giving her my money, my money is then going towards that propaganda. And um, this is, <laughs> this is a serious point because um, on the Stonewall website, which is um, one of the LGBTQ plus um, charities to promote well-being and equality for um, the LGBTQ community, um, the UK government are currently considering whether to block a gender recognition reform voted through in Scotland which would make it easier for trans people living in Scotland to live with dignity and work with dignity, which are all great things and are a human right. Um, so whilst they're considering whether or not they want to block this, the UK government have also announced that they may stop recognising gender recognition certificates um, from as many as 14 countries, including Canada, New Zealand and Australia. So the work that the anti transfer people are doing it does matter because laws have the possibility to be pulled back instead of pulled forward to allow people to live their lives and live their truth. So it does matter. It does matter where my money is going. It does matter that this is possibly being funded. So I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. I want trans people to be able to live with dignity and respect as is their human right, without having to explain themselves every time they go out a door that they have a, as much right to exist as anyone else because they're a human like the rest of us. Um, and on a smaller personal scale, um, she is using Twitter to attack anyone who doesn't agree with her politics. So she made a statement where, so she will make a statement where um, someone who <laughs> supports trans rights is basically um, held up to be the equivalent of being okay with rape. Um, as though trans rights and being okay with rape amount to the same thing, which is insane. Those are completely, completely separate things. Um, but that is one of the things that she has been doing. Um, or that if you don't believe sort of in free speech, in people have the freedom to choose whether or not to um, buy Harry Potter merchandise. Um, she then will equate you to being like the book burning Nazis. So she's very extreme in her aggression um, and she will point those people out and then her fans and amongst those <laughs> um, a high collection of transphobes will go and find these people on Twitter 
and just descend on them with, you know, hate, uh, just spewing their hate on them and just at attacking them for whatever the things that JK Rowling has said about them. Which I think we can all agree is nasty. That's really nasty. <laughs> um, I have got my pages in the wrong order. There we go. Um, so one of these was um, the uh, a British celebrity called Graham Norton, um, who is likened to a national treasure, and he is um, pro trans rights. Um, and there is a video, the video that I mentioned um, from Vera and the Council of Geeks. She really goes into kind of the details of that, um, following that story and kind of pulling it what happened. So if you want more information on that particular one, then please go and check out her video and her channel. I'm directing as though they're going to appear. They're not going to appear. That you're, At best, you're going to get a link. I have no lovely things to kind of shot into this screen. It is just me and the background of books, which I have deliberately put there as my... Totally forgot I was going to do something, but never mind, it doesn't matter. So the books I've put there are promoting um, trans books and promoting fem feminism and promoting um, ending violence against women. That's what the books in the background are for. So, <laughs> um, the as well as celebrities that are getting that treatment, um, she's also um, done the same to a trans YouTuber who was merely encouraging allies not to buy the um, Harry Potter game that is due out soon. Um, and I will link that YouTuber, Jessie Gender, I will link their video, um, which is called So JK Rowling Tweeted About Me. Watch the video and listen to their story because they put it so well. I don't think anyone can put into words better than that person can themselves about what it feels like to wake up one morning and have this hate fueled inbox over something that you said, um, which did not equate to hate. It was just a, if you want to be an ally, don't buy this video. <laughs> so um, please go and watch that. And also the way they end it is so um, life affirming and heartwarming. Um, and also a bit festive because, you know, it's still around January. We've just kind of had that, that back from Christmas feel. So do go and check out their video. So that's the first part to not buying is that I don't want to fund hate. <laughs> I don't want to fund any platforms um, where, where that are being used to be aggressive towards people and to um, try and stop laws that would improve uh, trans, the trans community's lives. The second part of why I don't want to buy any Harry Potter merch is I do not want to validate her. Uh, she feels very validated in her actions every time that someone buys a Harry Potter book or, you know, a magical wand or, you know, a t-shirt that's linked to Warner Brothers or something. It, it all, like a part of it will go towards her and the the phenomenon of this continues to go, well, people can't care that much because they still like Harry Potter and they're still buying my stuff. Um, this is also explained in the above videos as well. Her behaviour is not acceptable. Um, so I am not going to be talking about her anymore. That's it. We don't need to. What can we do instead that is more positive? Well, we can read more books by trans authors with trans protagonists. Um, there are some that I've mentioned quite a lot on my channel and this year I definitely want to read more. I've had quite a lot on my reading list and I'm going to be prioritising them. Um, so I'm always going to mention Felix Ever After, he's wonderful, um, that's by Kiss and Calendar, the book is so joyous and you should definitely go and read it. Um, Gender, which is a graphic non-fiction, um, which really kind of goes into what gender means and what gender is and how we think about gender. And that is definitely one I want to reread because I'm not always able to take in non-fiction in one go. So I want to keep rereading and like drip, drip, drip and soak it into my skull. And um, if you're looking for something a bit different, I have a rabble of drabbles and doodles here, which is by the trans author Wen Clark. Um, it's a collection of kind of writing pieces. Um, they did a challenge where they were given words and they had to write something um, about those about that word in the limit of 100 words. Um, this has got um, disability representation in here as well as um, LGBTQ plus representation. Um, and some are horrors, some are humorous. 
um, some are sort of more literary, um, and they're also accompanied by a picture that was inspired by that word as well, and they had to fit it into a three centimetre by three centimetre drawing. Um, so I will leave a link, this is a self-published book, but I will leave the link to that below in the description. Below, above, above in the description. Um, and also the memoir Unicorn by um, Amaru al -Khadi. Um, They are non-binary, they are a Muslim drag queen, and again, there is lots of pockets of, oh, uh, there's that word again, <laughs> being part of a lot of marginalised groups. There's a word, I can't remember it. Um, anyway, that book was a really fantastic read as well. Books that I want to read that are new to me, um, Case and Calendar from Felix Ever After released a fantasy middle grade book called um, Moonflower that I'm really, really keen to read. So that came out last year. So that is definitely on my list. I also want to read um, Catty Wampus, another middle grade fantasy, um, which is by Ash Van Otterloo. So that's been on my list. It's um, a couple of witches. Um, one is intersex and um, they sort of have a little brush with magic and cause a magical catastrophe that they need to clear up. And it just sounds like a lot of fun. I've also made a huge list <laughs> of things that um, my local library has. So um, different memoirs and different non-fiction books. Um, I'm particularly interested in Gender Euphoria, which is lots of stories of joy from the trans, non-binary and intersex writers. Um, and the memoir Uncomfortable Labels, My Life as a Gay Art um, Autistic Trans Woman by Laura Kate Dale. Um, so they are two that I'm definitely wanting to get out and there are many others in there that I'm interested in reading as well. Two booktubers that I now want to mention who will give you some great recommendations are um, Kevy from the channel Say Kevy. Um, they are a proud trans woman, trans woman, drag queen, avid reader and she is very happy to chat and point you in the way of a good trans book. Um, the other one is Jessie from Bowties and Books. Um, who is an activist, an entertainer, and a reviewer of joys and rants. Um, and she hosts the, they host the MB Book Club, highlighting non-binary books. Um, both of those booktubers have given me a lot of things to add to my TBR every time I watch their videos. Um, so definitely go and um, if you haven't discovered them before, which I'm pretty sure you must have done, um, if you've discovered me, you must have discovered them. Um, so do go and check them out. Um, I will obviously be leaving their links in the description box. Um, the, yes. Yes, that was it. Links in the description box. <laughs> I haven't got any other else I can ping in. Um, so that is, that is it. There we go. That's why I'm not reading Harry Potter. Um, I had a few more things that I was going to say. Um, so just quickly, I want to recommend if you have any books that you really enjoyed and um, that was by a trans author or had a trans protagonist um, or if you know of any other um, trans booktubers or any other people that recommend a lot of trans reads or anything else that is like trans positive please put them in the comments below so I can go and find them and so other people looking at this who read the comments can also go and find them that would be marvellous definitely go and check out all the videos and the um, youtubers that I have mentioned on here um, go and give them um, a like, go and give them some love, listen to what they have to say, learn something and enjoy the joy because it is joyous. They're all very, very lovely people that just want to make the world a nicer, more inclusive, love sharing place, which is kind of what we all want, really. Um, I am trying to keep this short, concise and focused. <laughs> so there's one last thing that I do want to sign post to just on the joy filling side of things. Um, but less on the bookish side. Um, but if you enjoy a good community feel, um, like I do, which encourages um, self-acceptance, um, celebrating uniqueness, then definitely check out the TV programme, We're Here. Um, I will leave a link to the trailers that they have on YouTube. Um, so this is three drag queens, including one of my favourites, Bob the Drag Queen. I love them. Um, two of these are gender fluid, um, one you may have seen on Dancing with the Stars, um, he's not gender fluid, um, but they go to small towns in America and they put on a drag show for the community and they involve three members of that community. So they get to share their stories, so they are from all different 
all different um, parts of the LGBTQ plus community. They've, everyone's got different journeys. Everyone's got different stories to tell. Everyone's got different things they want to get out of. Putting themselves up on stage and kind of showing that this is beautiful, that they are creative, they are artists, they are wonderful human beings, worthy of love, standing up for brilliant causes, um, and that they will inspire other people to maybe feel a little bit braver and feel that they are okay. Um, I just really enjoy the community feel to it. So it's not just doing a show and leaving, they also kind of promote the LGBTQ spaces. So they are, they find those groups, they kind of highlight them, pull them in and it's sort of like networking as well. So like some of them, they might felt like they're the only person in that small town. Whereas actually there is a family there if you are just able to look and find it. So I just find it so life affirming and it gives me the same feelings um, that I've had um, before. It just feels like a little pocket of heaven. I'm, I'm constantly kind of with a, with a tissue, just weeping in, in the loveliness. Some stories are wonderful um, with the things they were worried about before actually their family was supportive and things to them. Whereas other ones, you know, maybe the, the, the family aren't ready to kind of come to a drag show, but that person still feels the, the love of the other people around them and they feel proud within themselves. So it always feels, there is always that sort of love, but it is also very realistic as well. It's not just, this is a fantasy. It is people's genuine stories. Um, and I've, it gives me that same feeling that I've, I've had when I've been to Lords with the HCPT charity where it just feels like there's this little pocket of heaven where you smile at someone and you know they're going to smile back. You know, they're not going to judge you. They're, they're just going to be delighted that you're there and they're going to appreciate you for you. And it's very rare that you can have that like in the real world. Um, so just in those moments of, of that show, you just get that that everyone's there and they have the glam squad and they have the safe space and it's just so nice to see so many different people coming together. So if you want more <laughs> life affirming <laughs> LGBTQ plus joy, I definitely recommend that show. I recommend um, the books I've said, I recommend the YouTubers. So go and share some love, go and spread some positivity in the face of hatred. Mwah! Happy reading everyone.